Hi there, Cena here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create these text to smoke transitions on Blender. So let's get started. For any smoke or fire simulation, we need two special objects. One of the objects is the smoke emitter, while the other object determines the domain where we want the smoke simulation to be carried out. Here, we're going to use the default cube as the domain, so scale and position it to contain the entire smoke effect you're looking for. You can always change and resize the domain, just don't forget to apply the scale values to the cube every time you change it. Now, go to the object properties and under viewport display, select Y. Now is a good time to rename the cube to Domain, just to keep things organized. Finally, go to the Physics Properties, select Fluid, and set the type to Domain. Now it's time to add a text object. Rotate it 90 degrees about the x-axis and make sure all of it is inside the simulation domain. Using the text properties, you can set the alignment, the font, and the extrude value of the text object. Make sure you add some extrusion. This text object will be the smoke emitter, so I'm going to rename it to flow. At this point, if you go to the physics properties, you'll see that we don't yet have the fluid option. That's because Blender treats text objects different from a normal mesh object. Fortunately, we can easily convert our text into a mesh using the object menu and the convert options. With the fluid option now available in the physics properties, select it, and this time set the type to flow. If you haven't already, make sure to save your Blender file at this point. In fact, you should constantly save your file throughout this project. Now, with our domain and flow objects set up, we already have some smoke. Kind of, because we can only see it in the layout viewport, but it will not show up in render. That's because the smoke doesn't have a material yet. It's important to keep in mind that the material for the smoke needs to be attached to the domain object. So let's create a material for the smoke. Then, head over to the shading workspace. First things first, let's delete the principled BSDF node and replace it with a principled volume node which you can find using the add menu and the search field. Make sure you connect the output of the principled volume node to the volume socket of the material node. Then select a color and increase the density to a higher value. Now if we go back to the layout workspace, we can run the animation and see the smoke render in real time. But just before we jump into all the smoke settings, let's improve the scene by adding a light source. I'm going to add a sunlight, increase its strength, and rotate it about the x-axis. And with that out of the way, let's get ready to spice up our smoke. Let's start with the domain object. As a rule of thumb, always turn on the Adaptive Domain option to help reduce computation time. Then, go to the Cache settings, set the Start and End frames, and finally, select All from the drop-down list. The Bake All button appears, which allows us to explicitly tell Blender when to run the smoke simulation. Let's do a test run. Press Bake All, and once the baking is finished, play the animation to see the result. Not too bad. It didn't take too long. That's because our resolution subdivision is at 32, which typically is too low to get good looking smoke. Regardless, let's leave it at 32 for now, knowing that we'll be increasing it to 128 later down the line. The adaptive domain and the cache settings help speed up our workflow, but they don't affect the behavior of the smoke. The first setting we'll be using that will actually change how the smoke behaves is the dissolve option. You can find this option under the gas settings. Turn on dissolve to make the smoke gradually disappear over time, then bake and play the result. Since we're going to be pressing the bake button quite frequently, now is a good time to open a small view just for this button right here in the corner. To do this, right click on the edge, select horizontal split and drag the border up. Now scroll to the top and make sure you are on the properties view. Then press the pin icon to lock this view to our domain object. From now on, we will always have convenient access to the bake button. Our text looks like a blob right now, so let's make it more clear to something that you can actually read. To do this, we're going to increase the resolution to 64, since we can afford to spend more time on baking. We can see that the text looks a bit better, but not quite what we want yet. So let's hop over to the flow object, which if you remember, is the object that emits the smoke. Here we have the surface emission parameter. This parameter determines the distance from the surface where the smoke is emitted, set it to zero, so that emission takes place exactly on the surface. 
Next, we have the volume emission parameter. This parameter determines how deep into the object the smoke is emitted. Let's set this to the max value of 1, meaning that we want smoke to be emitted from the entire volume. Now, using our convenient bake button, let's run the simulation and watch the result. Much better. We can now actually read the text but it still looks pixelated. Soon, I will show you how to increase the resolution of the text without having to increase the resolution of the simulation. But before that, we're going to go through a few more parameters that affect the behavior of the smoke to make it look more stylish. So, select the domain object and go to the shading workspace. The plan is to add some color variation to the smoke. To do this, use the Add menu to bring in a color ramp node and an attribute node. In the name field of the attribute node, type in density. The result of these two additional nodes is that you can adjust the color of the smoke at any given point as a function of the density of the smoke at that point. Feel free to change the color or even add more color tabs on the color ramp node. Let's run the animation to see what we have. Notice that I didn't need to rerun the simulation for the changes to show. That's because we didn't really change the physics of the smoke. We only changed the material that is being applied to the smoke. So, as I promised earlier, let's increase the resolution and see what happens. Okay, the text is, predictably, less pixelated at this higher resolution, but I don't think it would be wise to increase the resolution even further, just for the sake of getting a smoother text in the first few frames of the animation before it turns into smoke, especially given that, at this resolution, the smoke itself already looks quite Good. If you want to see how I ended up removing all pixelation and made the text look perfect in my intro animations, make sure to watch until the end of this video. But before I get into that, to make the smoke simulation a bit more exciting, scroll over to the gas settings and increase the value called vorticity. The vorticity value adds some turbulence to the smoke. Let's also turn on noise. This will add more detail to the smoke. The parameters under the noise setting allow us to fine tune these details. I'm only going to change the upres factor and the scale value. The upres factor determines the additional levels of resolution applied to the smoke, while the scale value determines the overall size of the noise. An important thing to keep in mind is that the upres factor significantly adds to the simulation time. Okay, we're finally here. Let's completely remove pixelation from the text. The naive way of doing this would be to increase the resolution. Don't be naive. The clever way to do it, on the other hand, would be to use the original text object. We're not seeing it right now because we hid it a while ago, but let's bring it back. Then go to the shading workspace and create a material for the text object. Delete the principled BSDF node and replace it with a principled volume node. Set the color and the density here to be the same as the one we had for the domain object. Now that the smoke has a body double, we can switch them over any frame of the timeline to make one appear and the other disappear. Meaning that on the first frame, we're going to render the original text object and then remove it from the second frame onward. Conversely, for the smoke, or in this case, the domain object, we're going to disable it on the first frame and then enable it from the second frame onward. Now if we go ahead and render the entire animation, we get You can find more Blender tutorials on my channel and don't forget to subscribe to get notified about new videos. As for this one, thank you for watching and until next time, take care.